Hey guys, what's going on? So uh, this is Juan Rojas, I'm the broker of JPR International Real Estate. And so today we are having a conversation with uh, Catalina Portich, who is a good friend of mine that I've known for, I think, I don't know, 20 years or something. Yeah, time. around there, yeah. And she happens to be a licensed uh, family therapist. Is that? Licensed marriage and family therapist, yeah. Marriage and family therapist, okay. So the, the reason I, I thought of uh, having a conversation with her and was importantly recording it and then passing it on to you guys is because I was uh, talking to my wife as I was telling Kata uh, just a few moments ago. And, you know, I still like my wife. And so when I, so there, there I was talking to her and I go, wow, you know, I, 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 you know, we haven't killed each other. But I wonder yeah. if there's other uh, couples that maybe are struggling, let's say, right? Having a difficult time during this whole coronavirus pandemic craziness, madness. Uh, where now they're forced to be, you know, together, right, at home for extended period of, periods of time, 24-7, and with their teenagers and with their little ones, which uh, I happen to have a teenager myself who's 16 and a little one that's four. And how old are your kids, Kata? 16 and 14. Yeah, so, so I 16 have 16 and 14. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. So anyway, so I figure, you know, who better to to show us and tell us how to survive how to keep it together uh, from a relationship perspective with our spouses and kids at home uh now so anyway Kata, welcome to our uh our uh, new conversations can you tell us a little bit about yourself first of all sure so i am a licensed marriage and family therapist in the state of florida um i went to nova southeastern university i'm a south florida native um as you know because you've known me 20 years now, right? We have a mutual, my cousin's your friend. Yes. yes. Um, so yeah, and now I'm living in Broward. I have a private practice up here. Um, it's in the Davy uh, Weston area. Got it. And I've been in private practice for about three, two years, three, three, two, I lose count. Um, but I, before that, I worked in uh, treatment, in drug addiction treatment. So I was doing that in, in residential treatment centers. Um, so my background, I have a strong background in, in addiction, but also trauma. Um, and I think that um, all those things play into our family, you know, dynamics and our relationships so much um, that, you know, they go hand in hand. There's no way to kind of separate if we've had trauma, if we've had life experiences like addiction, there's no way that it doesn't affect our relationships, our marriages, our families. So um, I bring that perspective in, uh, which is a little different than let's say if you go to see like a, a, a therapist that doesn't have like a systemic, that we call it a systemic. Why? Because a family is a system. A society is a system. A couple is a system. You're a system within yourself. So if I'm not taking into consideration the context of things that are happening, I might just label you like, oh, you're depressed. And here's a pill and you're gone, right? But if I don't sit in the, if I don't realize like, hey, let me, I know a little bit about your life, Juan, right? So you've been through some struggles and some adversity. And if you came and you said to me, I'm feeling depressed, I'll be like, tell me about your life. And then you would tell me like, I've had to overcome all of these things in my own relationships, in my own life. And I'll be like, wow, it sounds like what's happening in your life is really influencing how you're feeling. So if I don't, if I don't take the whole system into account, then I'm going to, you know, cut you at your knees, like not really putting into consideration everything that might be influencing your mood, your state. And then you just walk out with a diagnosis and goodbye, and, you know, you're just depressed. Um, but when you go to therapy, hopefully, ideally, look for a therapist. <laughs> it's like my little PSA right now. Look for a therapist that um, is not just going to label you and deal with the behaviors, that they're going to look at you and your whole life and, and the relationships you have holistically. You know, you're not just some uh, living in a vacuum, in other words. So it's funny that you mentioned that. And um, actually, before we get started, um, how, how is your family doing? Oh, thank you. <laughs> so there, we're great. Um, so I've been able to transition into full time online. Okay. And it's actually flourished. Um, I'm seeing more clients. I'm getting more new clients by the day. So something about what's happening right now, but I can't say that that's the norm for everybody because there's a lot of therapists that are telling me that their whole caseload fell off. 
Uh Um, so, so it really is different for me. It actually picked up and I have new clients every week, which is something that doesn't always happen because we have a a pretty healthy caseload, you know, my, and, and that depends on the therapist, but somebody might see 20 clients a week and somebody might see 40. Um, but I've had a very healthy fluctuation of, of clients. So I've been busy with that. My husband is working still and his day has not changed at all. So it's been very interesting to see where my and my, my kid's life has changed completely and his has not been altered at all. Wow. At all. Wow. There's a little resentment there, I will say. <laughs> or his is fine. He's like going out to work. Um, and then I'm dealing with... In, uh, what does he do? Construction uh, management. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I know construction Apparently, is like one of those essential businesses. Apparently it is. I am too, but I'm able to transition 100% to telehealth, which has actually expanded me because now I'm seeing people. I coach as well. So I'm coaching in Colombia. I have clients awesome. in Colombia. Awesome. Um, and all this happened after the pandemic. Um, I'm seeing people in different parts of Florida. So, you know, it's expanded definitely. Mm-hmm. But um, my husband's uh, in construction, going to work every day, coming in, um, sending him to the shower, very stressed out about, you know, I had to kind of at some point like accept that he's going and I don't know, I can't, you know, police him every second. Are you wearing your mask? Are you washing your hands? Are you, I'm trusting that he is and, you know, still sending him to the shower um, when he gets home. But there is a lot of anxiety on my part, especially at the beginning of all of this. Is he bringing home, you know, essentially deadly disease that I have no, you know, I can't kick him out of his own home. So that's been interesting because as a whole, not everybody's experiencing this the same way. And I'm going to say that in our chat. Nobody's experiencing the pandemic the same way or in the same order or having the same feelings at the same time. So everybody. And, and, you know, and that's one of the things as we're talking about like this whole, what we were going to talk about right prior to, uh, to, to this call. Um, that was one of the things that, the things that you're, that you're you know, mentioning to me is that it's like in your situation, for instance, you guys are lucky that your husband still has a job, which means mm-hmm. that he's still bringing in money. You still have a job. Uh, maybe the setting of the job is different. Maybe before you were seeing patients in the office, now you're seeing them on like video, maybe. I don't know how you're doing it. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and so financially, I think, listen, I think right now, like, you know, priority number one is like being healthy and safe, right? Right, because that's just obviously number one. But the finances affect uh, Absolutely. everything. I don't care what anybody says, <laughs> yeah. right? The but finances I'm not- affect yeah, and, and, and let me tell you, I'm not immune to the fear of my husband. For, I think for the first two weeks, it, it was very palpable, my anxiety about um, is today the day is going to be let off because, you know, what's going to happen, right? And same with me, like week, I, I'm week to week. If all of my clients decided one week, that's it. There's no job security for anybody, I think, at this time. And even if you had a layoff early on and you already kind of know where you stand, Those that still have jobs, unless you're really, really essential, like doctors or, you know, grocery um, personnel, um, I think everybody is still very much on on unsolid ground. And I consider myself one of those because construction can't stop at any minute. And um, my clients can, you know, I might start feeling the effects of them being laid off. Therefore I'm a luxury. And you know, at that point, cause food comes before therapy. Um, but when it, everybody is, is let's say very much in uncertain ground when it comes to their employment. And I think it's important to note that um, some of them are going through it right now. They're, they're, they're not, it's not a hypothetical. Like for me, it is, they're literally going through the nitty gritty of it right now with the weight of that. Um, and so their experience of what's happening, their level of anxiety is going to be really different than somebody who does have job security. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. And that's probably another, uh, conversation that we'll, you know, that we'll have, uh, some other time, which is just how the finances affect mm-hmm. our, our relationships, right? Mm-hmm. Because they, because they do. I mean, I think there's, as we were talking about, you know, earlier, I think there's, from my perspective, there's probably two or three things that, that affect everybody. Uh, like uh, unless they live like in the jungle and yeah. it's, you know, money, 
health and relationships, right? Like yeah. we have oh, no, same- the jungle, they deal with that too. Oh. <laughs> There's currency in the jungle too. It may not be money, but right, 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 <laughs> I guess that's true. That. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so, you know, so, so it affects, but um, so let me ask you, what are some of the biggest challenges that you're seeing? Um, obviously without going to like, obviously like specific names, but which are some of the biggest challenges that you're, that you've seen from your clients Let's say, like in the last, I don't know, four weeks. Has anything changed? Any like, how are, yeah. what are you seeing from yeah. your clients? And I can only speak from my experience, right? Because right. sure everybody's, depending on the population you work with, it's also going to impact. Um, so, my population in general is already people who have some sense of job security. Um, and, you know, so far they, they, they've held on to their jobs and people who are coming to me are because they've held on to their jobs. So they, they're not struggling necessarily with that. Um, although, like I said, I think everybody to some sense has to have that playing in the background, whether or not, you know, I'm really that stable as I thought I was maybe a couple months ago. Um, I'm seeing that I'm seeing the gamut. I'm seeing couples that are separating, but not because of this, but they were already in that space. But I think this heightens, if you were already grieving that separation and, that, and, and the fact that your marriage or your relationship was coming to an end, now it's heightened. Now you're feeling that much more because what you would do before, like maybe distract yourself with going out with friends or you know, finding something else to do or going you know, out for drinks with a friend or whatever would help you distract it from your heartache, you can't do. So you really are being asked to sit in the pain of that. And that's just like really hard. Um, so obviously, thankfully, they're still doing therapy and I'm still, you know, advocating for them to take care of themselves as best as they can. Um, one of the, I think the things that I tell everybody, whether you're married or you have kids or you don't have kids or, you know, whatever your situation might be, I think that the, the statement that most of us therapists are, are, are really advocating for is do not judge your circumstance or your situation with anybody else's. That's a, a go-to for always, but especially right now, because somehow all of a sudden we saw this really quick turnaround where everybody, I think in that sense of trying to stay afloat, trying to adapt, um, turn their businesses into like this online platforms and they turn their businesses into like now it's working out from home and now it's doing all this. So all very honorable things to do because you, you have ad adaptation is absolutely necessary at this time. But also we have to be careful about because we're seeing this high um, velocity of, of material coming out and, you know, people that used to work uh, for example, one of my best friends, she's, she worked at, um, as a chef and she's, I think, temporarily laid off from what I understand. So she's now cooking at home. So that's her situation. That's what she's good at. That's her gift. That's her gift to the world. You know, that's hers. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> my gift is different, right? And my circumstance is different. So if we're comparing, we're really going to get stuck on thinking, oh, well, my family isn't having, uh, you know, a camping session outside because I have two teens that don't want to talk to me, <laughs> right? So my, my kids are not five and four and three who think are like, yeah, we're not a camping, whoa. So, you know, if I get caught up on like, you know, I'm not doing this thing right, I'm not quarantined right, I'm not in a pandemic in the right way you're really beating yourself up for something um, that you shouldn't. And, you, and you're probably already struggling in your day-to-day -day life with some sense of perfectionism and shaming yourself and being judged and comparing. So this is going to heighten that. So that's information for you. So should, uh, should people like disconnect their Instagram and not look at Instagram? Because, you know, I mean, everybody, like, you know, everybody on Instagram is like, you know, they're so much better than me. They have a six pack. They've got like the Rolls Royce, yeah. you know, I just yeah. saw somebody the other day, they were, you know, tanning in their backyard in the middle of the pandemic. I mean, what the I hell? Know. I live in a, you know, in a 200 square foot studio in an, like in a basement. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Even just talking like, well, the, the cousin we, that my, she's my cousin, she's my best friend and she was a really good friend of yours. She's in an apartment. Right. And I sometimes even like I'm tanning in my backyard Saturdays and Sundays. I don't have time for it Monday to Friday cause I'm working, but I'm tanning in my backyard and I really do think about her. And I'm like, 
she, she's, she, I would love to be able to share this with her, but I can't, you know, she's in her circumstance and she's making the best of her circumstance, you know, and that's, and it's probably because she's really good at not comparing. And I, I love that about her, by the way. She's amazing. Lisa. Awesome. Um, she's, she's really content with just where she's at. She's not comparing. She's happy for me. And even if she feels, if we, we're not talking about that. I'm using, I'm just using you as an example, Lisa, we should send this to her. Um, <laughs> she did feel a sense of undercurrent of envy. It's totally human. It's right. totally human to be feeling that way and being like, the hell, like, I don't have a pool, you know? And then reconnecting to like, well, that's not what I have available to me, but how can I make the best of what I do have? What do I do have control over? I can play, you know, games with my kids. I can, you know, do all this stuff. But what you said about social media, I was going to make a point to that. And we're, we have to use it intentionally. We have to be really intentional about how we're using it. If you're, you, if you realize that it is exacerbating your tendency to compare and you're starting to do, you know, you're starting to fight with your husband, you're starting to go, well, so-and-so's husband just did this for her because I saw it right there, you know? If you start doing that, go back and realize that you are, you know, comparing a 30-second TikTok <laughs> to your entire life, that that is not fair to your relationship, that is not fair to you, that is not fair to your partner. And then go back and see if, am I using this as a resource? I use it as a resource. I hate to cook, but all my friends that have great recipes I want to use it as a resource for them to teach me how to make a really good recipe. So, you know, if I'm using it, you know what, what are things I could do with my teenager? You know, because painting rocks with my, is, is not something I can do with a teenager. So maybe I'll, you know, watch some TikToks with what other parents are doing with their teens. If I'm using it as a resource, great. If I'm starting to feel the little green monster kind of show up, then maybe it's time for me to like, you know, take a step back and, and utilize it with more intention. When you say the green monster, because you're wearing a green Andy. shirt, because you're wearing a green shirt right now. Is that, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> so no, you're, 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 you're totally right. You know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's really uh, ironic. I don't know. Would you say that like this pandemic situation and, and I guess maybe like any crisis situation, which could be a pandemic, it could be a, a, a market crash, it could be a hurricane. Would you say that that kind of either brings out the best or the worst in people? I mean, I'm not a psychologist. Yeah, I think, I think it definitely can like almost uh, magnify things, right? Magnifies like if you're already okay. in a bad situation with your partner, um, this is going it, to, it can go either way. There is no formula for where it can go. It just depends on where you're at. And if I had lots of couples that were actually in a really bad, not really bad, but really struggling prior to this. And they're like, now they're, they're, they have the time for therapy. So they're coming to therapy. Um, they're slowing things down. You know what I noticed that's going to blow your mind? Go. Who, you know who, at least on my in my in my clientele, um, in the in the people that I work with, the teenagers are doing so well. They're doing so well because they were exponentially stressed with work, with schoolwork, and with expectations and getting straight A's. And you have so structured, like. You know, you have to do this. You have to do that. Then after this, you got to do that. Like their parents were planning every minute of their day. Like they, they had to be productive. And if they weren't productive all day, then, you know, their parents would get on them. Like, you know, you got to do something now. You got to do something now. And I've noticed that they're like, I have time to do schoolwork. The, the workload is less. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm less stressed out. My parents and I are yelling at, less at each other. So I think what, what it, we, we did there is realize for me, right off the bat, I realized the busy culture, which I already knew, of this produce, 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 and every second of your day needed to be productive and you needed to like quantify it some way with some sort of results. And the only, and if you don't have a day where you had something tangible to come, you know, to say I made this much or, you know, I, I did this. Um, then it wasn't a productive day. And I, I've been saying this even before the pandemic. I'm just glad it happened. Now, now, now I'm, there's proof of it. Yeah, proof. Um, I'm saying it is productive to do nothing. It is productive to just be. It is productive to rest. 
And in the society where that is not, it's, we don't equate success with rest. We don't, we're like, you know, all, the, all these mantras, like, you know, the early bird gets the worm and, you know, you don't rest. You can sleep you, when you die. You sleep, oh my God, that was. You know, you I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, right? <laughs> you sleep when you die. Like, no, you need to rest. You need to rest so you can keep going. Um, and your kids are the same. Your kids need to rest, you know? And if you're not listening to your kids gonna show you in their behaviors and their rebelliousness, in their rebelliousness, in their rebelliousness, um, they're gonna they're, their their attitude towards you, their resentment towards you, they're telling you you're not listening to me. And if when you don't spouse, take a step back, when your, your spouse, spouse also that's tell you like Oh that. yeah, that's how they tell you, yeah. Their behavior is how they show you what they're feeling. So if if they be they're irritable or you know um, they're hypercritical or you know they're just a little short with you, that's all information of like okay I'm not being hurt I don't feel hurt in this relationship I'm not feeling hurt and um, I I've been doing that for a while already as a therapist just taking a step back and stop stop let's say um, expecting that what everybody else thinks is good parenting a good child a good this a good that getting rid of all of that and being asking really myself what what does my kid need what what does this relationship need for them to get out of it what i also need they're, they're their own person and they can you know mine are definitely able to speak for themselves but even as little as five years old they can already kind of say like i don't want that and that doesn't mean you know okay you you can have ice cream every day right. but you know really hear them when it's when it matters hear them when it really yeah, be like present. Listen, pay attention. Yeah, show up for them, and and that's I I'm telling you, most of the problems we had we had with teenagers that were coming to me, and and I was trying to really try to drive this in with their parents, but they weren't getting it because we live in a in a society where you have to go a mile a hundred miles an hour, and if you're not, then oh, they're they're not going to be successful. And like, how do you define success? Sit down, take a step back. If you define success by your kid making six uh, figures, then that's what you're gonna push them to do. If you define success by the relationship you have with your child and how happy they are with themselves and how, uh, what kind of relationship they have to themselves, whether they're happy with who they are at the end of the day, if that's how you define success, then you're gonna be looking for other kinds of results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are some, um, like some, some solutions to some of this, like this, this, this sort of uh, busyness, like what should people, right? Like adults and I guess their kids too, or adults with their kids, right? Like yeah. parents with their kids, what should they be doing now? Like, yeah. because we're going to be so, in, in quarantine, on quarantine mode for well, don't I don't know, maybe another 30 days. If you were already struggling with something in, in, in your relationship with your child or whatever, something wasn't working. So use this time to reflect don't recreate what you were doing out there in here. So if their every second was structured and you didn't have time to connect with them and you were driving them from here to there and you don't have that problem anymore, but you're still trying to recreate it in your house by scheduling every second of their life without giving them breaks, without just letting them be, without just like lounging, without just doing nothing. Um, don't recreate that busy culture outside. Like let this space be, <laughs> you're doing it, aren't you? No, no, go, go. I'll ask you a question after, teacher. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Um, I have a lot of tips, so um, that's one of them. Try to try to really reflect on what's happening, and if there's something to be changed, what could that be? Um, because we don't want to recreate the busy culture that we were already um, being kind of pushed through the current with. We didn't really have a choice, right? We were just trying to grab onto anything. Um, but right now, things have kind of slowed down. For some people, for some people it hasn't. Some people are really struggling with, with feeling like they're, you know, lost their jobs, like they don't have job security. Um, maybe they're, that's showing up in, in their relationship. Like cut yourself a break, cut yourself some slack. Recognize that this is not a normal situation. And so you're going to be feeling anxious. You're gonna be feeling different moods throughout the day, throughout the week. Um, all of them are valid. All of them make sense given the context of what's happening. So just even cutting yourself some slack and cutting your kids and everybody around you some slack on, okay, 
this is this is real. I'm, there's there's a real reason why I feel anxious right now. Right? There's a real real reason. So so let me ask you a question. So let's say I mean if you know if there's I, I think you know we could probably break this whole thing down into like maybe two groups of people, right? Like mm -hmm. let's say on the one hand you have people and let's just to you know keep it simple like husband and wife and two kids and they have I don't know six months worth of savings, right? Like plenty of cash reserves. Like money is not a problem, right? Maybe they are temporarily laid off, right? Or just on a break. Like, again, I'm thinking like, you know, some people that I know, like let's say a dentist, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he's not necessarily like out of business, like forever. He's just kind of on a break, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe him and his wife and his kids are on a staycation, <laughs> right? Yeah. At home. Yeah. But what, how, what would you say to somebody that's maybe husband and wife and two kids living in a condo, right? And they're, you know, let's say they're struggling financially, which of course, in my experience, anytime that you have financial problems that like, just like you said, it magnifies any other stresses, like what type of advice would you give to them? Like if you could, I know it's not, it's not easy, right? You can't solve it like in a 30 second soundbite, but yeah. how would you tell them to like approach that situation sort of like methodically so that, you know, 30, 60 days from now they come out, maybe they are not going to be in a perfect financial situation, but maybe there's an opportunity for them to come out in a better relationship situation. Yeah. So that's hard because it, like you said, there's so many things like, what is their relationship like to begin with? You know, was finances an issue that they had in the first place? Are their kids healthy or not? Do they have, you know, issues with the kids already? Like, again, we don't live in a vacuum. So all these things are going to inform. Like I always say, like, we're, don't expect conflict not to happen in a relationship period. Like if you already have that mindset that conflict doesn't happen, then you're going to be um, disappointed every time it does. I say have healthy conflict. Healthy conflict is absolutely possible. It absolutely is normal in a relationship to have conflict. There's two people from two different backgrounds, maybe even two different cultures that have completely different ideas about how to go some, somewhere. So making room for your differences versus trying to get your partner to hop in on your bandwagon of what's right. Can two realities exist and two rights exist? Absolutely. And the faster we can accept that in a relationship, the easier it is going to feel to be heard in that relationship. Because really most of our problems is about, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. Uh, you know, because nobody's really trying to hear the other person. They're just trying to be right. So this whole notion of uh, I'm right, then that must make the other person wrong is going to put you already on the defense. So if you take that off the table and you're like, I'm just curious about how you're experiencing this right and vice versa the other person like i'm curious about how you're feeling and not minimizing or dismissing the other person's feelings about it you really want to hear each other out through this if you have nothing if you don't have a dollar in your bank account right now i can't even imagine how you're feeling on the level of stress um you don't have control over that necessarily right now unless you are you know you're adapting, right? You're, you're, look, you're looking at other gifts that you have. Can I cook? Um, do I have um, the ability to, you know, start maybe doing something that was never in my wheelhouse or never did I thought I would do, but stepping up, becoming a little vulnerable really at this time and being like, I'm going to have to step out of my comfort zone and maybe do a job that I never thought I would. And then as you're doing things that are going to be really uncomfortable and very trying for you, if you have a partner, and that could be a friend, that can be your parent, that can be, you know, somebody, you, you're a partner to somebody. You don't necessarily have to be married to, to be in relationship to somebody. But if you can hold space for that person and vice versa, they can hold space for you. You do have, that's not canceled. <laughs> that's not dependent on how much money you have in the bank. You have control over whether or not you're going to be there for that person and how you're going to hold space for them. And what hold space means, not necessarily fix it, try to get them to understand my point of view, um, not necessarily to try to get them to, to see that I'm the one that's right. Holding space is like, just, just give it to me. Tell me how you're feeling, why you're feeling, and then you take turns doing that. One day your husband or your partner, your parent or your friend is gonna need you to hold space for them. And then vice versa, hopefully they could do the same for you. And just listen to me, like hold space for me, 
because I'm really in a vulnerable position right now. And it's going to exacerbate everything if you don't feel heard and validated. And you can't get to that solution mindset when you're like still struggling to get heard. You know what I mean? Once you feel heard, okay, now what can we do? Now that I feel heard, now that you held space for me, now that I know you get why I'm feeling this way, what can we do? And then you, you brainstorm together. Like, well, you know what? I, I could sell this. I could do that. I'm, you would sell that for me? I would absolutely sell my watch for you. You know, if that gives us another month of peace of mind, let's do that. But if you're so busy trying to get the other person to, to jump on your bandwagon, you're not going to be able to really come to a place where you can collaborate together and be like, what can we do? And you know, as you're saying that, like I'm thinking of um, like, you know, even small business owners, right? Like I'm thinking of like even um, like employers, right? And their employees, like if you're vulnerable enough, I'm taking from this, that if you, if you can be open enough and transparent enough, you might have an employee that says, listen, boss, I'd be willing to go, like I have some savings, I know you're struggling. I'd be willing to, you know, not get paid for two months so that you can keep the business open and then I'll still work for you. I'll work for you for free for a week or two, or, or you can pay me when we close the next deal or when you bring in more inventory or I guess, right? Yeah. Like it, 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 it can work yeah, well, any number of different yeah, ways. Looking at it from a relationship of like a, a, you know, a boss and an employee. Um, I think that it, that is a, a huge thing to ask of somebody. So it would definitely, you're, a lot of bosses are just cutting their losses and like getting people laid off. But, um, cause that's all financially that they can do in that moment. Right. Um, I don't know how they're handling. I'm sure every business is handling it different, whether they're saying when this all ends, you can come back. Um, but, and that's a tall order to ask somebody. I would only say that's very individualized. If you can do that and you're willing to do that, go ahead, but that's not something that if you can't do that and you're not willing to do that, that you should feel bad about, right? That well, well, I guess what I'm, you know, what I'm taking away from what you're saying is, is to be open, mm -hmm. to be vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. be heard and to try to come up with some solutions, right? Mm -hmm. Like if yeah. it's husband and wife, maybe, listen, we got to sell the third car. We got to sell the jet skis, yeah. right? I don't know. Yeah. Um, right. We got to sell you, I mean, hopefully not like, you know, the wedding ring. Right. But, but, but to come up with some solutions yeah. together instead of just yeah. keeping it all to yourselves and like struggling. Right. Yeah. You're just going head to head in that moment. And you're just like trying to prove and hold on to, you're trying to hold on to what you had two, three months ago, which was a lot more security. You know, you're trying to hold on to something that doesn't exist right now. And sometimes we have to accept that where we're at especially if you're struggling to that degree, except that where we're at might require us to do a lot of changes in the relationship. And if I look at my partner in this as the enemy, then I'm not going to trust them to make these really big decisions with me. And that's going to really put a damper in our relationship. I need to make sure that this person feels heard and that I first listen to them. That's really how they're going to know how to listen to you. Cause you're right. You know, my, like, this is like, you're right. My husband doesn't listen to me. And I'm like, wait, hold on. Your husband's not here. You're here. Do you listen to him? You know what I mean? So like show them first how to hold space for you by doing that for them. And then when it's time for them to reciprocate that for you, they'll have a better understanding. Is it perfect? No, I, I had the biggest fight I've ever had with my husband in this, in this lap a couple of days ago, ever like in the biggest fight. But I have tools that I know I'm like, okay, we're off track. We disconnected. That really blew up. I know how to get back on track. And how you get back on track is by repairing the relationship. So actually, by the way, I'm going to do a little shout out to Gottman, John Gottman. So you can Google John Gottman repairs. And you will have a PDF right there that tells you exactly how to repair a relationship with your partner. It's going to tell you these are the words you use, you know, like, I'm sorry, I've been really stressed out. I didn't mean to go below the belt that way. Um, let's talk about it. That's a repair. And I, and time. Sounds reasonable. It sounds reasonable. Right. Right. But here's <laughs> the thing. If you have pride and ego, you're not likely to come and take accountability for something. 
And I always say there's no, there's no room for ego and pride in a relationship because pride and ego's job is to protect you, but it's not there to protect your relationship. So that works. That's the same with your kids. If I don't learn to repair with my child because somehow, you know, there's this authority, a hierarchy that happens in my relationship with my child. And I don't say sorry to them, even though I know that what I said was really bad. I'm going to justify it. I'm going to rationalize it because he was rude to me first and blah, blah, blah. But if you know that you did something wrong, your child is not going to learn how to apologize or repair relationships unless you teach them how through modeling it. Mm -hmm. So if you did mess up with your child, if you did a mistake, um, just repair. That is the, that's what builds the relationship. That's what strengths the, strengthens the relationship. But sometimes we get caught up in, oh, but that's going to make me look weak. And being vulnerable is not weakness. So being vulnerable, this is a very vulnerable time. If your partner lost their job, if they're scared, if you're scared, if everybody's scared, you're all vulnerable. There's no sense in hiding that behind some sort of mask of machismo or, you know, anger or, you know, indifference. Um, no, it's okay to say I'm scared shitless right now. And hopefully if your partner's good enough, I always say good enough because I don't believe in perfect. So if your partner is good enough, they'll be able to be like, oh, hold on, my partner's struggling here with something. And even though I am too, right now in this moment, I'm gonna hold space for them. And when it's time for me to, to be that, to, to let out whatever I'm going through, I need people too. So maybe it's in that moment, my partner can't hold space for me, but maybe I have a really good friend or maybe I have a, a mom or a dad that can hold space for me right now. So we're all, we're all finding what we need in this moment, right? Like I'm being that to my partner. I'm looking for that in my other relationships. I might come back to my partner when I feel that they're in a better solid place for them to hold space for me. We need to look, we need to hold space for each other. Really right now, that's, that's the takeaway. So let me ask you because I, you know, I get, we could probably talk about this for, for, oh, for yeah. a long, long time. Sorry, let me connect my laptop real quick. But we could probably talk about this for forever and a long time. And maybe we'll do, um, I don't know, maybe a little like live webinar or something where people can, can ask questions that you can answer. Oh, and, sure. And yeah, we'll, that's fun. We'll oh, yeah. They'll, they'll, and they have questions. And they ask questions like, my wife, my son, my teenager. Me. Yeah. So um, it, are there any, I don't know, like one, two, three books or authors or resources off the top of your head that you think like during this time you might say hey guys if you're married you might want to read this book together with your spouse yeah. take advantage right now that you have some downtime yeah absolutely okay so these are my go-to's or even and like for, for well let's start with like adults like spouses let's yes start. yes for partners and your relationships um so just for the day-to-day -day stuff, I think this, this actually this book for right now, when you're in quarantine with your partner and you just need to like have healthier ways of communicating with each other and have healthier ways to kind of relate to each other. Um, John Gottman has a lot of books. So How do you and, spell his last name? G-O-T-T-M-A-N. So okay. John Gottman. So any of his books are really going to get to the, the nitty gritty, the meat and potatoes of how do you don't here's what to do and here's what not to do it's very black and white um but it was very helpful in my relationship so so helpful just to have that and i'm like oh this is what not to do then i won't do it and it should be common sense but somehow somehow seeing the science behind it because it's science what he's saying like i've studied this if you do this right. relationship is gonna die and so you're like oh crap you know so it kind of puts you in your place it kind of wakens you up, shake, shakes you up a little bit. So anything by John Gottman. Um, ooh, um, anything by Esther Perel. Um, I, heard, I, I think I saw, I saw one of her TED Talks. Oh, yeah, she's amazing. She does. So if you don't want to, you know, she has podcasts. She has TED Talks. She has books. So it's interesting because one of her books is called Mating in Captivity. So how appropriate, right? Like how appropriate, Mating in Captivity. And one of the... She's very active right now. So if you even just went on her um, on her website and registered for her 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 lives and her YouTube channels and all of that stuff, she's very active right now and she's talking a lot about this subject about relationships and in quarantine and how two people are going to 
show up differently during a pandemic because you know they're one of them's more intellectualized with it you know they want to get very logical and the other one wants to get more emotional and so then you're you're doing it wrong and you're pointing fingers no you're doing it wrong and she talks a lot about we got to make space for both um you have to make space for the one that wants to be very logical and the one that wants to be very emotional there's room for both and there's purpose and function in both so if you don't make room for both then you're really missing an opportunity in honoring your your partner's differences mm -hmm. so okay. she talks a lot about that so, so anything by them too so john gottman and esther perel yes how, yes. how do you spell perel again p-e-r-e-l -E okay okay so i wrote it down correctly all right, and what about for teenagers? Oh, and for kids, by the way, I have a really good one. So if you want to help um, your kid with anxiety, and they may have had anxiety already, or maybe not. Maybe this is the first time they're showing anxiety at all. It's called um, Anxious Kids, Anxious Parents. Mm. Um, that's a really good one. And what I love about it is that you can implement what you learn there to yourself. It's not just for your kid. Mm -hmm. Anxiety is... Is, it may show up differently for people, but the underlying way that it that the functioning of it is the same for every human being. Mm -hmm. So even though the book is written for kids, it is very much speaking to the parent too on how to deal with it. Okay. Um, any last minute thoughts? Anything like what is the last thing that you might want to share with people so they so they uh, survive? this <laughs> pandemic with the relationships hopefully better yeah. if not intact instead of you know ending up you know this pandemic situation you know broken up with their kids hating them with like in just total chaos right yeah um it's difficult because there's so many things that i'm trying to think of like everybody's all right, so we'll just so what we're gonna have to do is we're just gonna have to plan like a weekend seminar <laughs> no, no 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 i can give something but um you know, just cutting yourself a break, cutting your family members a break. Um, you know, if, if you're, if you are already feeling a sense of like, I'm failing at this, I'm not doing it right. Just take a step back and remember, nobody's getting an award for this. Nobody's going to, you know, who quarantined on, the best. Any awards? No, they're not giving awards. <laughs> just take a step back and just like, it's more important right now to hear each other out and hold space for each other than it is to keep things going how they were before and you know actually there's an argument behind do we want it to continue to go the way that it was before i personally have decided like we're going to quarantine one weekend out of the month no matter what because i i loved 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 the experience of not having to be rushed anywhere and slowing down to forcing myself to slow down um i've saved money <laughs> you know so many so many benefits so I don't think I want to done and reflect on what you want to keep. What do you want to keep from this time? I'm sure there's lots of things you don't want to keep, but there might be some things that you want to keep from this time. And, you know, change doesn't happen overnight. Change is incremental and it's a ever, ever going process. You know, it never ends. So, you know, cutting yourself some slack with that too. Like, why, you know, I, I implemented everything you said and, you know, I just told you, and I'm really transparent, even with my clients. I just fought with my husband this week, and you know, this is what I did to repair and get back on track. Because there's, I'm, I, my diploma on my wall does not exempt me from human existence, you know, or human challenges. We're all going through the same thing. The books that I gave you are great resources for you to start getting the tools that you need, so that you don't get keep keep getting stuck on, with the same kind of hole that you keep falling into. Right. Um, or if you fall in the hole, I always say, good, now you know how to get out. Right. Yeah, right. just get out of it. And, uh, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this was um, amazing. I think hopefully it's, uh, to me, it's invaluable. By the way, how, I don't, you've been married for a long time. How long have you been married? Yeah, 17 years. Okay, 17 years. Listen, that's, that's, that's not nothing. 17 years yeah. and, and, <laughs> and two kids, right? Yeah. yeah. And you guys are still. And only one fight. Huh? And one fight. There you go. You're, you're winning at this. You're winning at this marriage thing. <laughs> no, guys, I, I think, uh, I think that what, what, um, what Catalina is saying is 100% uh, accurate. Um, I can, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I can definitely attest to it. You know, my wife and I have been married for 
uh, I was gonna say we've been married for 14 years, but really we've been together for like 14 years and we've been married for, I don't know, like I, six, seven, eight. <laughs> we won't tell her, yeah, we won't tell her. I think it was 2012. But the point is, um, is that I think, I think this matters. Um, uh, you know, if you guys know a little bit of our story, um, you know, my wife had breast cancer, you know, when she was 28, she had, you know, uh, she's had it three times, two recurrences. So uh, from our perspective, like having, you know, speaking to a therapist, right, we've been to like support groups, like when she got cancer, she went to a support group for, you know, for those, uh, uh, you know, for, for patients, I went to a support group for caregivers, and, um, and I've been speaking to a, a coach, therapist, for like 16 years, and so uh, to me, it's it's hugely invaluable. And I think it's sometimes harder for men, maybe, um, you know, to just be vulnerable. But I think mm -hmm. the the I think the if you have somebody that you can talk to, um, it just makes that vulnerability so much shorter, right? Instead of dragging it out, like mm -hmm. you're in, you're in, and you're out, and then you're you can move on with your life, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So the discomfort of that, yeah. And you'd be surprised a lot more men are reaching out. And interestingly enough, the last two couples that I have scheduled with new clients, the men have been the ones setting up the sessions. They're oh. the ones that are looking, they're the ones setting it up, they're the ones there there's a lot of men that are very willing to to do that right now. And and you know, you, you all you need is two willing people to kind of really look at themselves um, and be ready to change some things about themselves and take accountability about some things. Um, I know that we initially go into therapy like to point fingers and be like, they, they need to change all this and then I'll be happy. But what really ends up happening is that, okay, turn that finger back around, look at yourself and, and see if there's anything you need to change. And in that you changing, does that other person pick up on that and start changing as well, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, uh, I think that's, I think that's, that's definitely, uh, definitely, definitely true. Yeah. Um, Kata, so how can people reach? I mean, we're going to put your, you know, all oh, your information, yeah. but should okay. they? Yeah. So my, um, handle in Instagram, I'm pretty active on that is, um, cat gets curious. So Kat, and is that with a C or with a K? C, 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 C A T gets curious. Okay. Um, uh, you and my private practice is called CMC Therapy in Davie, and that's mm -hmm. a group practice with other doctors and other um, therapists. So we have plenty of people. If I'm not your, you know, I want a male. I want a um, a male that's African American. I want a uh, a younger person that that's single because that's what I'm going through, and I don't want somebody that's been married. I want somebody, you know, we have a lot of different therapists. So if it's not me that you connect with, I'm sure we'll find somebody that works for you. Okay, good. So if you don't like a Colombian brunette, then I'm sure they have your cup that's of tea. Been married and has two teenagers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's some. It's, it's totally valid. You might want a single person that's going through the same thing you're going through. That that knows what it's like to you know go on online you know dating and all that and i don't know that so that's totally okay i can empathize with it i can actually relate to what dating looks like because i did date but you might really want a certain person and you have that person in your mind and you know that's why we have a lot of different people that might right. fit what you're looking for okay awesome so anyway listen i appreciate you so very much uh coming to talk to us it was actually a lot of fun and I got a lot of value, so hopefully uh, people get a lot of value out of it as well. And we're gonna put all your information as far as how to reach you, your contact info, your website. Um, so if you guys uh, feel like you need some help, some guidance, some resources, just contact uh, Catalina, and I'm sure she'll be very, very happy to, to talk to you. Absolutely. And this Thank is something that she absolutely loves. So she could probably talk to you about this for her. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> My, my family has to tell me, stop talking about therapy. <laughs> it is like my one subject. <laughs> but okay. I promise I'm, I'm fun when I'm not doing this all the time. Okay, good. But I bring fun into therapy. I think if you're not laughing, if you, if you don't have a sense of humor uh, in the room, I have to be myself. I'm, you know, I am this exact way, like I'm talking to you with my clients. At the end of the day, I, I laugh with them. I cry with them. You know, we do the whole thing. We do all the things. 
Okay. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. And do you think would you um, would you do like a, like an initial um, you know pre session or what I do do or? is I get on the phone like um, if oh by the way you can also find me on Psychology Today so just Catalina Fortich which is my name um, mm -hmm. they'll find me and there's a number there and there's an email there um, lots of different ways to find me Google Google my name it'll pop up too um, but uh, what was the question. Um, <laughs> I even forgot. <laughs> we forgot. We both forgot. How to find me. Oh, initial console, uh, phones. I yeah. set up like, I usually say like, hey, do you have time at this time so we can get on the phone and we do like a five to 10 minute thing. I get kind of a gist, uh, you know, what are you dealing with? What is it that you need? And then I figure out really quickly, is this, if, is this something I could help you with or is this somebody else that can help you with? But right. I would still, I wouldn't be like, oh, I can't help you. Click. Okay, we're going to figure out who is going to be a good fit for you and for what you need. Okay, so, so if you're like struggling right now and you need some help, then maybe you can reach out to her and she can be your lifeline and pull you in the right direction. Yes? And even like uh, DM me on IG. I, I'll answer there too. Um, cool. Some people give me like, can you do, can you send me resources on books? And I'm actually. Help. Help. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So yeah, yep. Yeah. Lots okay. of places you can reach me. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you guys continue to stay healthy and safe. Thank you, Catalina. Hope that uh, you and your husband and your kids Thank also you stay healthy and safe. You and too. Uh, we'll get through this together and hopefully we'll be, you know, we'll be out of this and back to normal as soon as yeah. possible. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you, Juan. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.